Hello everybody, welcome to Something to Talk About. My name is Taco, and I'm covering an A Song of Ice and Fire character from the books. I do this like every Saturday. Hi. Hi! Welcome to Something to Talk About. My name is Taco. I just said all this. We're covering Thorn Smallwood. No pun intended, but kind of a smaller character than we're really covered. Um, but yeah, see, you want to see him? He's right there. Acting First Ranger, friends with Alistair Thorne. Sounds like a cool cat. <laughs> so if you don't know what's going on here, on Saturday I do this. Uh, I cover characters, pause, read this. Cover song by some fire characters in a certain way. And um, yeah, <coughs> I'm copping here. I'm trying to <clears throat> trying not to, but I just had to. All right. Um, this kind of, like I said, this character is actually kind of small, so. Um, I think we could just, like, rock it. So let's just rock it. Let's just keep on rocking. Thorin Smallwood is a member of House Smallwood, believe it or not, and a ranger of the Night's Watch. Thorin is lean, brawny, and has a weak chin. He's got a weak chin. Um, and his mouth is hidden beneath a thin beard. Well, wow, you can hide your mouth behind... Be beneath a thin beard? Don't you need a bushy beard? All right. Uh, I have a thin beard. I have a big, I guess I have a big mouth. <laughs> I walked right into that one. I do talk a lot. All right. Where was I? Um, of course, this isn't going to be quick. It's me. He wields a long sword. That was really important. Long ago, Thorn and Gier Mormont, Lord Commander of the Night's Watch, that um, Thorin told, there you go, told that Gior Mormont uh, that Craster gives his sons to the wood. So yeah, Thorin, uh, Jor Mormon didn't even know that Craster like sacrifice uh, his kids to um, the others. Uh, Thorn Smallwood told him that. I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm struggling here. Um, Thorn's demeanor is lordly and aggressive. He's kind of a jerk. He is friends with Sir, Sir Alistair Thorn and hates wildlings with the exception of Craster. I love Craster. He kills all of his sons. He's great. <laughs> what? All right. Why do you like Craster? He's the worst. He's the worst wildling. Straight, right up, straight up, the worst wildling. Um, Thorin is distrustful of the Weirwoods. According to Jon Snow, Thorin was a henchman of uh, Sir Alistair Thorne and former master at arms at uh, the Castle Black. Um, he was, yeah, Al Alistair Thorne is the former master of arms. And Thorin dislikes Jon and Samuel Tarley. Following the death of uh, Sir uh, Jeremy Riker, hey, I did a video for that. Uh, command of the Rangers falls to Thorin, who takes Jeremy's heavy breastplate in sable trimmed cloak for himself. Go watch that video of Jeremy Riker if you want. It's kind of like a, it's kind of related to this, right? And I have a whole thing about like sable cloaks, but I talk about it in Jeremy's video, not this one. Um, Am I doing this out of order? No, I'm not doing this out of order. Hey, let's talk about House Smallwood. So um, my second slide, I usually talk about houses. And sometimes I'll do the Night's Watch. But if, like, they actually have a house, I'm probably going to talk about that house. Because I talk about the Night's Watch all the time. I've done it in so many different videos. So, yeah, let's just talk about House Smallwood this time. House Smallwood of Acorn Hall is a noble house from Acorn Hall, believe it or not, uh, in the uh, Riverlands. I, for some reason in my head, I thought that House Smallwood was from the Reach. Is it just like, I, I think of like, you know, woodsy, like the Reach, right? I just assumed House Smallwood with the acorns. It's like, oh, I bet like it was founded by some son of Garth the Greenhand who loved acorns. I just assumed that. And then I started writing this. I was like, wait, what? They're from the Riverlands. All right, their sigil is six brown acorns on a yellow field. According to semi-canon sources, their motto is from these beginnings. It's a cool motto. The Smallwoods are sworn to House Vance, but it is not confirmed if it's House Vance of Atronta or House Vance of Wayfarer's Rest, which is one of the House Vances. Uh, the lands of House Smallwood are near those that belong to House Goodbrook. Why is that important? I don't know. I thought it was. <laughs> I thought I'd leave it in. Um, but yeah, so Riverlands, House Smallwood. Got it. Acting First Ranger. A morning, the morning, a morning, a morning before the Great Ranging, John and Samwell walk in on a conversation between Thorin and Lord Commander G.R. Mormont. I believe Samwell's bringing him maps. 
Um, I did listen to this chapter to rewrite this, or not to rewrite this, but to write this. I listened to that chapter. So, um, Thorin attempts to convince Gior that he should command the upcoming Great Ranging, not Gior. A Lord Commander, uh, Lord Commander's place should be at Castle Black, lording and commanding. I should be first rangering. Uh, Gior tells him that Thior, uh, Thorin isn't the Lord Commander. <laughs> like, you're not the Lord Commander. You don't get to make these decisions. Thorin claims that he is now First Ranger now that Benjen and Jeremy Riker are dead. He declares that, that he already sent out... All right, I'm, I, I'm using pronouns. I'm making this confused. So... Jeremy Riker's like, you shouldn't do the Great Ranging. You're the Lord Commander. You should stay here in Lord Command, and I should do it because I'm the First Ranger. And he's like, you're not the First Ranger or the Lord Commander. So that's what Gior's going to say next, right? Gior declares that he already sent out two Rangings and uh, will not wait and wonder as the third one is lost as well. So if he sends out uh, uh, Thor and Smallwood, he's going to just... Thorn and Smallwood's going to die next, and he's going to wonder what happened, right? Um, so uh, uh, Mormont dismisses Smallwood with the reminder that Benjen Stark remains First Ranger until his death is confirmed. That still hasn't happened. When that day comes, Jor will name First Ranger, not Thorin. Once Smallwood is gone, Mormont exclaims that he would sooner name Sam as First Ranger. He complains that Smallwood called him too old and too frail for the ranging, and that angered him. He's insulting me. He pissed me off. Screw that guy. <laughs> That's what Gior says. So the great ranging. Um, Thorin is uh, uh, one of the senior officers during the expedition, expedition Beyond the Wall, commanding the rangers in a column. He commands uh, the vanguard. So in the column, he commands vanguard. They investigate White Tree, the fourth abandoned wildling village that they have encountered. White Tree is dominated by a large tree, Jon Snow, the largest tree Jon Snow has ever seen. The weirwood shades the entire village beneath its canopy, but the size does not disturb Jon as much as the face, whose jagged mouth is large enough to swallow a sheep and contains human bones. That's some on-the-nose human sacrifice. I mean, sometimes people like, you know, Ned Stark will behead somebody and then, like, wash the blood next to the tree. People just feed people to these trees. Like, they got human bones in the mouth. Like, that's... If you don't think that people sacrifice people to the weirwoods, like, this weirwood is eating people. That's all I'm saying. I, I know everybody knows that they sacrifice people, but this is, like, the most on-the-nose, like, it's in the tree's mouth. <laughs> scary tree all right where was i um lord commander mormont notes that the tree is old with uh his raven agreeing old um god i love the raven um and uh, john adds that it is powerful as well thorin smallwood declares that he now understands understands why men feared heart trees when they first came to Westeros and cut them down, and he would like to take an axe to this one. That'd be, it would take a long time. It's a really big tree. You're going to be swigging for a while there, Thorin Smallwood. John replies that his father claimed that no man could tell a lie in front of a heart tree. And Mormon agrees that his father said the same. So apparently, Jeremy, or Jeremy Rector, um, Thorin really wants to cut that tree down. It's not a lie. The uh, village's the village is empty, though uh, Thorin declares uh, um, there were wildlings here last year. That's what Thorin says. Uh, then he um, he sends foragers to search for games. So, yeah, they get there. There's this talk around the giant tree, and then Thorin's like, I don't know what happened, man. Last time we were here, there were, like, people here. All right, you guys go and get some deer or whatever. All right, let's get to the fist of the first man. Fist of the first man. Lord Commander G uh, G Murmans men arrive at the fist of the first man. Jon Snow thinks that it actually looks like a fist plun um, plunging up from the ground. It does in that picture, too. That's fantastic. Um, where am I? Uh, the uh, the Gior tells Thorin Smallwood that it is good ground, and Theor, Th Thorin... I, Gior and Thorin, I'm screwing up. I'm calling them Theor and Gior. And Thorin 
agrees and replies that is an old and strong place and the heights will be easy to defend. So Thorin Small was actually agreeing with Gior Mormont. Like, hey, this is the first man is actually a pretty good place. This is a good spot. The commander and his bird agree <laughs> that they are not likely to find a better place to defend. Uh, its disadvantage, pointed out by John, is that they will have to climb to get water because there's no, like, well up there. Thorin asks if John is too lazy to climb a hill. <laughs> Gior um, restricts Thorin's rangers to patrolling the eastern bank of the Milkwater. He's like, you guys can't go too far, man. There's some creepy stuff around here. During the meeting of op of the officers in Gior's tent, Corn Halfhand, yes, he shows up. He tells them what he has learned um, from a captive. Corin suggests that three scouting parties, one led by himself, one led by Thorin, and the other by Jarman Buckwell. Mormont agrees. Jarman Buckwell will take four men to climb the giant's stairs. A giant's stair. There you go. Thorin Smallwood will lead a party to probe the milk water. He just loves the milk water. Well, Corin, which I misspelled wrong like three times here, um, uh, will lead the third party into the Skirling Pass. Skirkling? Skirkling Pass? It's a weird word. All right, so that's what happens. Isn't there like something that happens at the fist when everybody's there? Oh, yeah. They'll get killed. <laughs> Fight at the fist. After returning to the fist, Thorin attempts to convince um, Sir Mandalore Locke and Jor Mormont that the Night's Watch should, should surprise Mance House. Let's just attack them, is what Thorin says. Before the Night's Watch departs the fist, however, they are attacked by whites from some deads. Um, during the fight at the fist, Thorin... Uh, coordinates the firing of fire arrows against the undead as the Night's Watch is being defeated. Thorin advocates sending the reserve to hold um, hold the west wall of the fist, but Lord Commander Mormont has him call them back uh, to cut their way out. We need to go. When uh, a dead snow bear comes upon the commander's, of the Night's Watch, Thorin charges the animal. He nearly takes the bear's head off with the longsword, but he doesn't. But the be the beast then takes Thorin's own head from his shoulders. So he, like, Pez dispensers this bear, and even with the big hole, the bear still goes, Argh! and bites Thorin's small one's head off. Wouldn't it just come right out of the hole? That's all I'm reading is like he almost cuts his head off, and then he the guy with the bear with his head mostly off bites the dude. Wouldn't his head just like fall right back out? That's what makes me, I don't know, man. Um, yeah, so Thornton's dead as the Night's Watch retreats to Craster's Keep. Ronald Harclay replaces Thorin, uh, as commander of the uh, remaining Rangers after Gior Mormont's death at the meeting at Craster's Keep. Jon Snow briefly contemplates Thorin succeeding as a Lord Commander, but Jon remembers that Thorin is dead. That's it. I don't have any theories. I looked some up. I couldn't find any good Thorin Smallwood theories, so we, we're not getting any. Uh, what do you guys think of Thorin Smallwood? Uh, I like him, but, you know, he's kind of a jerk. He hangs out with Alistair Thorne, and he doesn't really do too much. He's just like, no, I want to be cool, and then he dies. Um... Getting his head bitten off by an undead bear's pretty, pretty metal though. <laughs> it's pretty, it's pretty hardcore. It's hardcore, Thorin. <laughs> but yeah, thank you guys for watching. I thought this was gonna be a shorter episode. I guess it kind of is. Um, and um, yeah, that's it. Like and subscribe. Do all that YouTube stuff. Smash the YouTube's buttons. And um, yeah, peace.